and uh, we are going to see the uh, the next station. Uh, again, one, one one of those stations that are not actually um, mentioned anyhow in, uh, in in the New Testament. Well, nevertheless, uh, but, well, the tradition established by the Franciscan monks established even well way before that. Of course, uh, it it has made them over the course of time. It has made these places just uh, as holy as places that have connection to some something in the uh, in the um, in one of the gospels at least. So the sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. So um, there is a story. Um, that a lady should, that lived nearby where Jesus was passing, carrying his cross. She, she just uh, was leaving her house uh, and she saw Jesus and she felt so sorry for him. He was, uh, he was blood dripping along his face and the sweat. He was suffering. So she, she took a, a piece of cloth and wiped his face uh, with it. And uh, over here, so the tradition has it that this is the house of Veronica where we are. And uh, there is this secondary use column over here. It's, it was inbuilt uh, most probably in the 19th century. Um, maybe, um, uh, well, it's like we know for sure that the descriptions were made uh, around the Crusader times, but we're not sure whether the column has been here since the Crusader times. Well, it's actually written there that, that this is the house of Veronica that uh, wiped the face of Jesus. So, and it is believed that the, the face of Jesus was imprinted on, the, on that uh, piece of cloth. And this is how we, well, we believe to have the first icon of Jesus. And the name Veronica actually means Vero, uh, Vero, uh, uh, Nika, like the, uh, um, the Vero, the true, the true face, right? So the true face of Jesus. And uh, this, this is, uh, of course, now a, let me move a little bit. Before we uh, before we continue with the, the beautiful painting, uh, well, of course, in the nineteenth century, this house was turned into a chapel. There are services here held. Um, normally, uh, the place most of the time the place is closed. It's open on reg on some on like regular hours. So you can you can always check. So for those who are planning their trip to or like organizing a trip, you can always check the working hours in the Christian Information Center, and it provides the most accurate um, and up-to-date information about the opening hours, about the regulations in different Christian institutions all across Israel, not only Jerusalem. So obviously, it's most likely that Veronica never lived in that house, but uh, it's quite common now it is well it is well the story of veronica is so widespread all across christianity and different denominations that um uh, it's just a part of the tradition and it doesn't matter whether veronica really lived in the house or not we know for sure that this was a residential building everywhere in the old city people live old city is not a museum city it's not a dead city people live there people go shopping people go uh people walk there people work there it's just how things are in in jerusalem and also loads of tourists lots of very very important places that just coexist with the mundane uh things that's how it works in, in Jerusalem. And that's what makes it so special. Of course, so St. Veronica uh, made its way to world art. This is just to illustrate what, uh, what happened. And nowadays in this building, there is a workshop, the Icon Workshop. And uh, <clears throat> you, can, you can purchase an icon from there. There are several uh, uh, nuns. Uh, working there, they they are icon painters, and uh, you can even visit. As well, you see how they work. Um, it's very very small place, just several rooms. Um, also, um, well, you, you're not allowed to film there in that section, so I couldn't move in exactly to the workshop. So I, I was not allowed to. Uh, it's said that the filming is prohibited, so you should you should arrange it beforehand. Uh, but still, uh, you can visit, and um, uh, well, it is believed that well, it's kind of a 
very important uh, souvenir if you could purchase an icon from uh, somewhere from Jerusalem and and purchase it from a place where allegedly, according to tradition, the first icon was made. Well, I think it's really special. And well, of course, there is um, um, the part of the of the memorial plaque about the Pope uh, visiting, uh, of course, the the holy sites and uh, uh, this church. That's important. Well, the, well, the this well, uh, you know, the Via Dolorosa is a um, and pilgrimage on Via Dolorosa is definitely a trip of a lifetime, and uh, it's it's just really sad that not everything can be visited. So this is exactly from the from the work from the workshop from the icon workshop. This is the photo I sourced from the online. This is how the icons are made exactly there in the same very place, and I believe it's the perfect location for icons. And uh, this is it. We can move on from the from to the next station, and uh, well, we are just walking um, from the sixth station to the seventh. It's not a really long way to go, and the good thing for us that just uh, um, during the pandemic, the city authorities change the paving and now it's a lot safer to walk a lot a lot more convenient so if you are if you have any mobility issues now you know that even with a wheelchair with a pram uh, with the walkers hi kitty whenever i see kitty i always film kitties uh someday they're going to be very very popular i hope and uh, so it's not a problem now a few years ago just before the pandemic it was very challenging with the prams and wheelchairs. The only thing is that it now gets very, very, uh, it still gets slippery. Also, of course, there will be a lot of souvenirs of all types, of all kinds. You will see a lot of ceramic works. You will see several uh, very good and very reliable antique shops. And uh, this is a very, I would say, uh, uh, typical designs uh, from, from Jerusalem. When I visited Jerusalem in, two, in 2013, I actually purchased some of those, uh, some of those mugs and uh, I, was, I, I just looked at them and thinking, oh, it must be so magical to live in Jerusalem. Um, I should tell you that whenever I'm in Jerusalem, on the one hand, I always feel... Uh, like overwhelmed because of so many holy sites, because of so much history really looming over you on the one hand. And on the other hand, well, I feel spiritualized, even though not a religious person, but I feel so, I don't know, uh, enlightened and uh, so inspired. And I'm always tired, of course, because we are when I when I'm where I study so much, even even when I do it on my own and I don't really study, I still learn a lot. And now we are entering a very special road. Uh, it looks like just one of the paths, one of the roads in the uh, um, in, in Via Dolorosa, but it's not just a road. Um, so the seventh station, again, you see very characteristic. So these digits uh, placed here early in the 20th century. These are quite recent placed, I think, in the during the pandemic. So the seventh station. Jesus falls for the second time. Here is the Coptic chapel. Uh, I wasn't able to go inside when I was filming it, but uh, on, in some of my other visits, I was able to go inside and take some photographs. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, the way, uh, where we are now is actually one of the main streets of Jerusalem. So Jerusalem, as I mentioned in the previous episodes, um, it was, well, there is almost nothing on the surface from the times of Jesus, uh, because in year 70 AD, there was, a, there was a big fire and the second temple was destroyed. Uh, and uh, afterwards, in the year 135, Jerusalem was completely destroyed after the Bar Kokhba revolt and numerous attempts of Jews to return Jerusalem to them uh, and, uh, well, resist uh, the Romans. So the city was destroyed and rebuilt completely. So there are very, very few places in Jerusalem 
on the surface where you can find something that would connect you to the times of Jesus. I showed you the, the well, the section of the of the of the stone paving where now the the police station is, but other than that, very few more locations. But if you know where to look for the proof, if you know where to look, if you if you're looking for some you know uh, some information, you will find it. And here, for example, in the in this chapel, <coughs> there is some archaeology, and they are, of course there's also an altar. Of course, there sometimes there are services held. But what's really interesting here is uh, is archaeology, which is older than than the chapel. So this chapel was also made in the 19th century, and uh, this is altar of the 20th century, obviously. But the extensive archaeology. Um, well, keeps bringing more uh, more knowledge to the surface, and uh, they actually found that um, this is already outside the city. Uh, they found the arches. Uh, they found that uh, well, this the street where we are now walking is actually the Cardo. So this this the, the street where we are the. The uh, a layout of the city is the layout of the Roman city built in uh, 135 by Emperor Hadrian, Aelia Capitolina. So the Romans were so angry with the Jews that they just wiped Jerusalem from the face of the earth. They even renamed the city to make sure nobody remembers what Jerusalem is. And this is when the Syria Palestina name <clears throat> was brought, connecting it to the Philistines, the people of the sea that came here. So just the idea was to show that nobody was local to the city, nobody was uh, um, <clears throat> Nobody belonged to this land, and this was the land under control of the Romans. That was it. And uh, the archaeology actually shows that indeed this was, uh, we are now outside the city. Just inside the church, there are arches showing the entry. And the street where are we now, this is the Cardo Maximus. So the, the Roman uh, planning of the city was always to have the Cardo and the Decumanus. This, the two main streets, uh, they will be stretching from north to south and west east. So from north to south is Cardo. And we are now walking along the Cardo, the street that actually stretched uh, from the Damascus gates to the Mount Zion. And when in Jerusalem, when you when you realize, okay, so I'm on the Cardo, you don't really need maps. You don't really need anything. You know you're in the main street and it's going to take you from, from there to there through just across the uh across the old city, which is actually uh one uh one um one square kilometer in the in the square. This is how tiny the old city is. But it's bottomless. Like literally, it's well, it's or well, there is a bottom, there is a bedrock, which is good. We will talk about the bedrock, but in general, um it's like too much, you know. Sometimes it's like really Jerusalem, that's too much. Stop it. Station eight, you see, also um in the previous station, so Jesus falls again. There was no mention of it, but of course, well, well, the Franciscans, and now we assume that Jesus must have fell many times because it was heavy, it was horrible. And yeah, so another station, uh, women of Jerusalem weep over Jesus. And we know that there were there were gates, right? There were arches. So that was definitely outside the city. There is a proof to it. And the arches found in the church in the previous station, they actually date back to the times of Jesus. If Cardo is the second century common era, Hadrian times, the arches, they are the proof that there was a gate, there was an entrance in the Jesus times, which means that we are finally now outside the city. Why it is so important? Because we know that Jews would never execute anyone within the city. And the Romans also, they would prefer to execute in, uh, in the big open places. And uh, 
like of course places where everybody could see it but also the idea was Jesus was a Jew and at that time in in early first century uh the Jewish ways were still respected. So the Jews would always bury uh, people as far as possible from where they lived outside the city, which is important because we are on our way to Golgotha. We are on our way to the Holy Sepulchre. And the whole question is whether the Holy Sepulchre is the place, is the Golgotha, right? So we find more proof. And had we just walked along the Cardo Maximus and passed the church, we wouldn't have known that actually, yes, we are now about to enter the outside of the city. And uh, well, there is one more proof that actually the Holy Sepulchre Church is exactly that holy. Well, just one more thing to add uh, here. So women of Jerusalem weep over Jesus, uh, the, uh, the eighth station. Um, here we do not have, let's say, the exact quotation from uh, from the from the Bible, but there was an episode, and I, I will show it to you very soon. Uh, so the idea was uh, here. Well, yeah. So in Luke, so during Jesus's journey to his crucifixion, he meets a group of women who are mourning for him, and he responds to them saying, "Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves." and for your children. It's mentioned in the Luke. We do not know exactly where it happened, but that's a good enough location to, to connect it to the next station. This is the wall of a monastery. Does this mean, well, actually in order to reach to them for the next station, for the ninth section, we need to make a U-turn now which is really, really weird. Does this make, that? does this mean that Jesus would have to turn right, go up, stand to uh, talk to the women and then return and go back with the heavy cross, sweating with the, with the brow dripping on his face? Of course not. So this wall of the monastery built in the 19th century blocks actually for, for us the way to Golgotha. But at Jesus' time, there was no monastery, there was nothing, and it was just the gardens, we will talk about it, and he would continue going all the way. So behind this wall, and behind the monastery, the Hospitaller's Order uh, monastery, uh, well, organization, um, there is a, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which we're not going to see today, but we always talk about the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And... <clears throat> The uh, uh, very good proof showing that actually that place was really important uh, for, for actually a long time. The secondary use of this column, most probably the Crusader Times column, column, it was built into the monastery wall in the 19th century, say Nika, right? Saying, uh, well, Vic, well, Nika is a victory. And it actually says Jesus Christ, you see the uh, on the cross, Jesus Christ, so the, the, the well, like victory of Jesus Christ, so that he endured. And um, this is just, this is just the marker, the 19th century marker of the station. This is the, the cross of the Hospitaller's Order or St. John's Order. So this is uh, one of the numerous Christian organizations that operates in Jerusalem till nowadays. And uh, again, so this is the U-turn we, we need to make because of this monastery. <clears throat> now we need to return to Cardo. So again, to the left-hand side, let me see the time, very good. So to the left-hand side, there will be the seventh station, right? So we are on the Cardo. Behind us is already the outside of the city, which is good. And to the right-hand side, we'll, we will continue to the ninth station and to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. But before that, there are many more other locations to visit, which are normally not included in the pilgrimage tour. And... Uh, not always also included on a regular tour because there are so many more things to see. But since we have all the time we, we need, I was thinking why not to show you to those locations. And um, we continue. So we are, we're still in the Muslim quarter. 
and the biggest section of the Via Dolorosa actually up until now, it, it, it goes along the Muslim quarter. The Muslim quarter is, um, well, it, uh, the division uh, of the city into quarters, uh, of course, it happened much, much later, times of Jesus. There was no Muslim quarter. There was no Islam even at that time. So the city looked very different in terms of administrative division, but the layout, uh, mm, well, we don't have much information. We only know that mm -hmm. uh, uh, starting from uh, the second century, of course, the, uh, the city changed completely. And <clears throat> we know that from 135, when Hadrian rebuilt the city, the, lay, uh, the, the layout of the city didn't change much. So it hasn't changed since the second century uh, AD. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Of course, I couldn't but show you those halvas. My favorite is the Fistuk, as you might know. I'm also a huge fan of Shkedim, of Almond, of Almond Halva, the fantastic delight. I, whenever I'm in Jerusalem, I always return home with a bag of uh, fruit leather and Halva, and oh my goodness, uh, this. This is the place that I'm really, I really dread to pass by. This is like all, all the pastries and baklavas and whatnot made of Fistuk or the pistachio. No. I don't want to, I just covered it with my head. I don't want to see it now. But so, but for the vibe, you see, this is this is the market. But basically, this is like all the entire old city is the big, big market. Uh, it's like one uh, one square kilometer of markets. Uh, and here we are. So more kitties, of course, as usual. And this is where the Muslim quarter. Well, we leave the Muslim quarter. The Muslim quarter would continue a little bit, and then we'll switch to uh, to another quarter. But this is the place where we actually need to go up. We need to go up um, because because of the constructions, because of the constructions that uh, took place in the second in, in, in the second century. So we need to go up. That's why I told you that we'll be going below. We're going underground today, but we're also going up via Dolorosa. Does it mean that Jesus had to make all of this and then go upstairs and then downstairs to, uh, to Golgotha? Of course not. Remember, he continued the way straight uh, to Golgotha in the aid station, which means that the, the crucifixion place is to the right from where we are now. Anyway, I'm showing you something absolutely irrelevant. This is just the entrance to one of the shops. But the thing is that the original entrance to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, as it was built by Emperor Constantine, was here. From here, the church was built in, uh, in the middle of the 300s. And from here, from Cardo Maximus, you would be entering the outside of the city, the place of crucifixion on top of which was the, the church built. And of course, now you pass by, you, you don't think about, you don't notice this, you just pass by as a guy takes you, as your pastor takes you, you're carrying the heavy cross, all you can think of is the suffering and this fantastic experience that you are now going through, reconnecting to your, with your faith uh, or just connecting with history. This is the map. So why we know for sure that this is the Cardo Maximus and why we know that the, the church, the entrance to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre was exactly all the Cardo, because we have a map of a map. The sixth century mosaic, uh, floor mosaic found in, in Jordan in the Christian church. And there you go, this is Cardo, this is Damascus Gates, this is the Mount Zion, and this is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre right in the middle, just on the Cardo. We got the proof now. So we can continue. <clears throat> uh, of course, on uh, the Madama map is a Christian is is, a, is fully Christian, and you can there you can only find the the Christian sites. 
uh, not only Jerusalem, but also across uh, across the Holy Land. You can even find Ashkelon there and Ashdod. And I have referred to this uh, map many times already on my tours. And as we go up, which I, I was saying, and what I was trying to say that Madame Map is not really accurate when you want to know what Jerusalem looked like. Uh, but uh, in general, the holy sites, the oldest holy sites, uh, you know, you know, on which let's say to which you can re you can connect the this or that location, the tradition. It's very good. It works. And now there's one more place over here. This is a church uh, built in the 19th century. And this is a Russian church, uh, the Alexander Nevsky Church. It is built just very close to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Uh, we will see it on the other tours. Uh, and it was uh, it was built and it, uh, it they with the participation of the Romanovs. And this is where I would share my teaser that I'm now working on a big project. It's still a long way to go. I just started. Um, the number of tours to connect St. Petersburg, Moscow, and Jerusalem under the umbrella of the Roma, under the auspices of Romanovs and uh, the contribution to the construction of the holy sites and the pet, well, patronizing of some Christian sites in Jerusalem in the 19th century and the 20th century. Intriguing, isn't it? Well, we continue. So we are now on top of Via Dolorosa. So Via Dolorosa, well, like the uh, the original with the street level is, is is lower, right? From here, hold on a second. There you go. Do you see the dome? This is the dome of the Holy Sepulchre Church. This is it. And just here, you see these are the walls of the Alexander Nevsky to the to the left. Um, but we're not going to the to the um, to the Holy Sepulchre Church now. We're going to no less exciting places. First of all, we still haven't seen the Nine Station, and we still haven't gotten to the undergrounds. So we are now going through the very narrow passage to uh, the Nine Station, and of course, this uh, souvenir shop. Um, is the great indication that well that you it's a good sign you're on your right way to the next stop to the to the next station that's definitely what you can find here a lot of wooden things uh crosses um, beads uh the, the wooden things and they're normally cra normally craft from the olive tree they're normally made in the west bank of course you'll see a lot of uh myrrh and frankincense and, and the candles normally the candles are uh, are sold in the bundles of the 33 candles like each for a year of jesus and you can purchase them everywhere also here and uh <clears throat> I was here three times and I made three different videos and uh, in three very different videos, the city looks different. Like what's important, this is the ninth station, Jesus falls for the third time. Normally here, I like this because here we see the Holy Sepulchre Church. <clears throat> Normally here, um, pilgrims would leave the big crosses and then they would continue to the tour of the church. Um, so and there they, they cannot come with, with the crosses, so they, they will leave it here, and then um, they will continue the experience. Uh, <clears throat> and here, there are other very important things to see. Uh, and, uh, well, of course, again, you see here, this is the indication, this is the sign, so Jesus falls for the, for the third time, for the last time. Well, again, here we are to reconnect, right? To imagine, uh, to to go through this uh, and our own right experience. Well, to try to experience like what it was like for him, and here we see Coptic Orthodox Church, and to the right hand side we see one more, uh, one more important chapel is the Queen Helen uh, uh, Coptic Orthodox Chapel. The thing is that normally this place is not visited. It's also closed many times. Um, but 
when I was there, it was open. And I was really, really looking forward to take it to this place. Because here is a very, very important cistern underground. So you have to go through this church. It was closed for a long time. The cistern has recently opened after the pandemic. They did a lot of, you know, um, <clears throat> preparation to for the tourists, you know, for, for visitors to be able to actually go there safely. And for a very little, for, for any donation, uh, you can go and see the cistern on your own. And that, well, I didn't want to invade people's privacy, so I didn't feel they, they had a service there. And Copts are one of the oldest Christian denominations in Jerusalem and in general. So the Egyptian Copts, uh, in the early stages of Christianity, the uh, many Christians who did not agree uh, with the mainstream, um, uh, well, theology, they had to flee to Egypt. And this is uh, how the Christianity continued there in a bit different form, but it's still considered Christianity. It's not a sect, nothing like that. And there is a big uh, Coptic community of Christians in Jerusalem. And there are many, many pilgrimage tours. You see the church is still, uh, it's also still um, being um, rebuilt, but what we are going to see is a lot more exciting. So it's St. Helena Church uh, Chapel. Uh, and before I can, before I continue, there's something I want you to see. So this is the this is Constantine and Helena. Why Helena, his mother? Because Helena is believed to be the one who actually persuaded Constantine to uh, first of all allow Christianity as a religion and then to con well to convert. Uh, and she's believed to be the first one who got converted to Christianity. And she is the one, she's the first pilgrim who went to the Holy Land to define the place of Golgotha, to define many, many uh, um, <clears throat> important sites. And it is also believed that it, it's, it's named the Helen's uh, cistern because uh, from here, the uh, would be the, it would be the quarry and it would be the place to drink water while the construction of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre was uh, taking place. And here I am trying to go through a very, very, very narrow passage to take it to the cistern. Uh, at some point, my phone nearly fell down, so I, I had to film it already being inside. It was very dark, so the quality of the video is super appalling. I am very sorry, but what is important that here we see the first of all the quarry and then the cistern. So for the quarry, archaeologists they have been able to prove that the quarry was used at the times of Herod the Great, which means the end of the first century BCE. And why would Herod need uh, the quarry here? Because he was busy rebuilding, extending the second temple. So the stones from here, from this quarry, were taken to build the second temple. And then, <clears throat> let me uh, return to them for a moment. This is important. And later on, we know that the walls of the quarry, uh, it, was, it was not used, and we know they were plastered. And if you're in a, uh, in, a, in a cave and you see plastered walls, it means it was used as a cistern to hold water. We'll have Q&A very soon. I just would like to wrap up with the cistern. <laughs> And one more proof, you see here, this is the hole for the buckets to get the water. So it is believed that, well, we know for sure, and I will be sharing it when we do the tour of the Holy Sepulchre itself, that Queen Helena was taken to the site. Uh, she chose um, well the position of the church and everything. And we know that when the church was built, so from here, they, they took the water. And it is believed that even Queen Helena herself took the water from here while uh, building the church. And uh, well, that's the place. And obviously the quarries were always outside the city. And uh, of course it was supposed to be in the, in the very, in the close proximity to the construction site. And it's not really far from, uh, from, from, the, from the Temple Mount. Here, we already see the, uh, the, the roof 
of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. We are not going there now, but please bear in mind this building. Uh, one more thing, uh, one more chapel, one more church. So the Coptic Church over here, this one, right? So the Coptic Orthodox Patriarchate. This is uh, like one of the central. So this is the Patriarchate. This is the central, uh, the spiritual center of the Coptic Jews in um, in Israel, the Saint Jacob's Church. They're still uh, restoring it. And uh, what what is important here, right? I told you. I mentioned the bedrock. So. Let's read it together. St. Jacob's Church erected in the 4th century on a bedrock. It is an extension of the Holy Sepulchre and it was renewed in the Crusaders era. Why is the extension of the Holy Sepulchre? Uh, does it mean that it was, it was, the, does it mean that the St. Jacob's Church was built just at that very time? No, but why it is called the extension of the Holy Sepulchre? Because it is built on the very same bedrock. And we know that in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, there is a bedrock. And it is believed to be exactly the bedrock of Golgotha. So, and it's here, also here, there is a proof that the Holy Sepulchre could be the site, might be the site. Uh, <clears throat> we're not allowed, of course, to see the Patriarchate. Uh, but uh, I was allowed to, well, well we, uh, I could see the souvenir shop also here. You saw an interesting, uh, an interesting sign of souvenirs also in Russian, of course, because there are many, even nowadays, there are still uh, tourists from Russia in Jerusalem and also a lot of Russian speaking population in general. And I don't know, I find this uh, souvenir store um, so uh, I don't know, special for some reason, because it's in the church. It's not just in the uh, in the city. And uh, you are so close to the to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. You're so close to the place of crucifixion, to the place of resurrection. And by the way, I just noticed that the prices in that souvenir shop are a little bit lower. It's not a promotion. I haven't been paid for it. I promise. Nobody pays me <laughs> for uh, for all of this, but I just take it to the to the nice locations. Anyway, so we're leaving now. Let's have a Q and A before we embark uh, to uh, on the tour of the uh, of the last location that I'm going to take you prior to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And I remind you that I believe that it would take me actually two tours to tell you the story of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And you see, renewed in the Crusaders era, there is a proof that definitely there is a Crusader architecture. You see those uh, uh, pointed arches, and also you see the elbow columns. This is the know-how of the Crusader period over here. The elbow, uh, elbow columns. It reminds of a, of an elbow. Uh, it is definitely for sure. Like this is the Crusader time building, and it's fantastic to be in there. Even though you just uh, perform a transaction of buying, a, I don't know, a cross or a candles, it doesn't matter. So normally from here, the pilgrims would turn right and would go to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. But since I have one more location to take you to, I turn off my phone and uh, I had to go through the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, went outside and uh, we are now in the Christian quarter and we are now very close to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. It's actually behind our back, but there is one more spot. Remember I asked you, so keep in mind, uh, remember the uh, the tower, so the, the bell tower behind us, Church of the Holy Sepulchre, and uh, before the church, I want to take it to one more location that also will uh, shed light and add some proof to the, well, to the importance of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, this place. But this will be after Q&A. And let me see if I'm actually with the timing. Very well, very well, good. On a moment, I'll turn on the chat. So, questions are welcome. Thank you so much for the tipping. Also, so once again, I'm sharing the links here. Thank you for your support. 
And uh, well, I could have taken you on a on a regular tour because I also understand that when I when I get my license and when I and when I start working, I would probably just I won't have time to tell all this, and this won't be really needed. It will. Well, of course, it will depend on the situation, but now I can also, well, show you more and I can practice more. This never, never rehearse to know a little bit more and to be able to show a little bit more if, if your tourist needs that. <clears throat> Hi, Karen, good to see you. Sorry, I didn't see you join. I haven't seen you for a while. How have you been? Hi, Richard. Good to see you as well. Cindy, hi, dear. It's so great to see so many familiar names. Unbelievable. Thank you. So if you missed the previous two episodes, just contact me and uh, I'll send you the, uh, uh, the links to watch the recording. Was Jesus fruitful mentioned in the Bible? Did anyone help him back on his feet? There... Um, <clears throat> No falls are mentioned in the Bible, but there is a story of Simon the Kyrene that helped him uh, carry the cross. It's the fourth station. Um, it's the fifth station. Uh, we finished uh, with it in the second tour. So the Simon of Kyrene is mentioned. Uh, we are not exactly sure whether he did it because he felt sorry for Jesus or he was made to do it. He was just a Jewish pilgrim. Uh, we don't know, but we know that he helped Jesus carry the cross um, for a while. Did you have a day of a tour of the Holy Sepulchre? Kelly, we've been there already many times. You, you never really spend there the whole day, but actually you could, uh, um, really. Um, of course, of course. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be taking you to, to the place where I... Uh, well, without actually starting it properly. And of course, so the reason why it's taking me so long to uh, take you to Jerusalem sites, because I want to uh, I want to prepare thoroughly and I want to make sure I don't miss out on anything. And uh, of course, it doesn't mean that I'm, I'm sharing with you what we heard on the tours only and everything we heard on the tours, of course not. So there is a lot of reading involved. There's a lot of well, a lot of study involved, and but the best, the best uh, advice for anyone who is now well, who wants to study to become a tour guide, regardless of the location. But of course, when it uh, when it gets to sites of such importance, epic importance, top level importance, the best would be also to just go there on your own and to connect with the place. Find your way to connect with the place. And once you connect with it, your studying process, the way you remember things will get much easier. And I, at some point, I managed to connect to Jerusalem. I can't really say the very moment it happened. Uh, I think it happened after I had my uh, pistachio knafe. Um, so... I don't, I don't mean to say that, I don't mean to downgrade the importance of the holy sites, but after I had this fantastic uh, uh, dessert, and before that, I spent about four hours of walking the holy sites and filming and reading. It's like in the one hand, you have a gimbal on your phone, and on the other hand, you have the, you have the Bible, uh, and on the other hand, in the third hand, you have the study book. That's how you have to juggle things. Um, and then I just did myself with uh, with Arabic coffee and Arabic dessert. And then I left the, the coffee place and I just felt that was the moment. I don't know. So I, I really recommend anyone to just find a day and, well, spend it there. Try, just don't be in a hurry. Relax, breathe in, breathe out, you know, notice things, observe things, and you will connect. That's it. So that's a little bit of a very, very private experience that I've had uh, in, in Jerusalem. Um, so let me see the, the comments. Uh, I know, Karen, you've been busy. 
Thank you so much for joining. I really appreciated your time of Jesus. This was outside of the second wall. Uh, by 43 AD, they started to work on the third wall in Jerusalem. We are not talking about the third wall of Jerusalem. It's not, it's not relevant. What is relevant now is that at times of Jesus, there were it was the outside of the city and uh, then where we are now it's not the time of jesus because it's time of the, the, the this is the layout of the aile capitalina i mentioned it in the previous tours and there is a tour that i did a few weeks ago on the western wall and other walls of jerusalem where i mentioned the construction of different walls um and uh, but but this is not relevant to this tour it's not relevant, but thank you, Joel. Um, so Golgotha means skull. Golgotha is the Aramaic word. It means skull. Um, we're not exactly sure why uh, the skull. Maybe because this. Maybe because the 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 um, the rocks looked like a skull, and I will mention it uh, in the Holy Sepulchre tour. So that's that. That's, this is done as the place of crucifixion. Hi, Don. How many churches are in the direct path of the actual Via Dolorosa? There are fourteen stations. Uh, all of them have uh, churches or chapels. Almost all of them. Almost all of them. For example, the first station is actually the church, but there is an alternative church of the flagellation. Uh, it's we we've been there. It's just opposite the. Uh, the original site, which is the, the, the school for boys now in the Muslim quarter, of course. Uh, yes, Joel, thank you so much for your translation as well. Nancy, could you please send me the link to the previous? Uh, Nancy, could you please send me a DM and uh, I will send you all the links for sure. Uh, I, there is like no way I will, I, I can do it now, but I also take a picture in case you, you, you don't text me and I will rem remember of it. Rosa has such an interesting special vibe. Absolutely, Karen. And it's not an it's not an easy vibe. It's not the vibe you would get, I don't know, in Paris or in Tel Aviv. It's different. It's it's a complicated vibe, but it's a very special vibe. And it's a very special place to be, regardless of your religion. And even if you're an atheist, it's still a, a special place to be. Uh, Joel, feel free also. So anybody who wants to see the previous tours, please feel free to uh, to contact me on, on my Facebook, on my Instagram, on my email. So once again, I'm sharing the link to my website. I'm just pasting the same links on my website. You have uh, uh, all the ways to connect with me and just, just text me, send me a DM and I will send you the links to watch the previous tours. Of course, and it's not a problem. Um, okay, we'll be wrapping. I'll, I'll be wrapping up with the chat and getting back to the tour. <laughs> jet lag from St. Petersburg to Jerusalem. Yes, I'm. I've been jet lagged for over a year now. Uh, we'll have a Q and A in the end as well, uh, and I will be able to stay longer because uh, there will be still a few hours uh, to my third tour tonight about the Spillblood Cathedral. So I'm turning off the chat for now. We're going to see one more site. We actually need less than 10 minutes. And then we'll have a Q&A for those who can stay longer. Um, we will have all the time together to uh, talk about the, um, uh, well, to talk about the questions. So we continue here very well. Okay. So I have taken you, you see, there's only six minutes left. I knew that there was no really, no, no sense to make longer videos because of so much side talks and many questions. So this is the Church of the Redeemer. Uh, it was constructed in the 19th century. Uh, you see here the, uh, the, well, the old image. You see it. So the Emperor Wilhelm II and Empress Augusta came here to, well, opened the church, the consecration ceremony on the Reformation Day in 1898. The, I mentioned visit of Wilhelm II and Augusta to Jerusalem on many tours. And it's actually next weekend, I'm taking you on a live walking tour to Tel Aviv to the American German colony. And I will show you the place where Kaiser Wilhelm II stayed. 
uh, I will also tell you how the uh, how uh, how Germans uh, lived in the Holy Land and why they came there, why they would come and settle in the Holy Land in the 19th century. We will do that uh, next Saturday, and because I will be. Uh, traveling, I will be in Tel Aviv next uh, Saturday for two tours. Also, Nevet Sedek for both virtual tours, another company I work with. The Via de la Rosa will continue in a week. Uh, so, you know, I, I like uh, giving uh, talks like that on Zoom, but of course, being on location on site in the middle of things, this is my favorite. So, this is the inauguration ceremony with the Kaiser and his wife and the, the congregation. So, you see his portrait here as well. Uh, the, the history of his visit, you know, there's like also the prob probably it would, uh, it could really be just another tour on just the visit of Kaiser to Germany or to, to Jerusalem, so to the Holy Land, but that's the different kind of tour. We are here to talk about this church and why the 19th, end of 19th century church would be that meaningful to us. Architecture, that's why. Uh, before we go underneath, underground, uh, just let's take a look at the beautiful interiors. I, I actually like the, the architecture of the church. You see here, of course, the God, the realm of God. Uh, you see here also, <clears throat> and by the way, in one of the tours, I will be taking you seven floors up to show you the, um, uh, the how the city looks. Uh, from above. So we see here also the same cross. We've just seen it, the, the, the cross of the St. John's Order or the Hospitallers. And uh, sorry, before that, over here, right, this is the the emblem of Germany, start, uh, the, the eagle. It was um, initiated by Charlemagne, so when Germany uh, joined the Roman Empire. So this is like, these are all also symbols as well. Um, of course, this is a new church. Before that, there was a crusader building, of course. And before that, there were also Byzantine churches, of course. Everywhere around the Holy Sepulchre and everywhere in, in Jerusalem, in the old city, uh, if you see a church built in the 19th century, it probably means that it was just destroyed. And before that, there was something from the Crusader times. And before that, normally the Crusaders would rebuild something on the Byzantine sides, on the holy sides from the Byzantine period. That's how it worked. So now you see uh, the beautiful church. It's perfect there. It's air conditioned, uh, very nice. Highly recommend to drop by on a, on a hot uh, day in Jerusalem, but it's even cooler when you go underground. Uh, I like it that for the construction of this church, um, for the um, uh, for the stained glass images, they actually uh, hired uh, in the in the 20th century quite recently a stained glass artist. They needed uh, well, it needed uh, a lot of restoration. So now. Uh, it's it's like it's, it's like it's nice to have some to some very very old locations, so very very old sites. You can still see the place to modern art that doesn't actually look very modern. It looks very very timely and uh, up to the point. So underground of the Redeemer's Church, there are ruins, and uh, again because of a very poor light lighting in the. Um, uh, uh, there in the Redeemers, uh, the video is not of the best quality. So the oldest, uh, what archaeologists have been able to dig to uh, is the quarry from times of Herod the Great. Again, so, uh, well, it's like BC, right? So Herod was busy uh, quarrying the stones to rebuild the, the second temple. Uh, and we know that exactly the Herod's temple, Jesus uh, is believed to have visited. Jesus was there on the pilgrimage. And this is, well, uh, we know that Jesus, well, Jesus must have been to Jerusalem several times. Um, we're not exactly sure how many times and the gospels provide different accounts, but that doesn't matter. So what we know is that we have a Herod quarry here. Again, if it's a quarry, so this must be somewhere outside the, of the city. And uh, there in the museum, uh, they have very good 3D models, like infographics that, well, makes things clearer. So uh, I just sourced it from their website. 
you can watch it. Uh, I just sort of from the online and you can see. So this is where we are now. Uh, this is the quarry <coughs> of the times of Herod the Great. I need to move it somehow, probably here. We don't need it like this. I didn't make this uh, infographics, okay? I didn't make it. And uh, here, um, this is the what would be Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Of course, it's not here, but this is for us to understand how close we are to Church of the Holy Sepulchre and how close we are to the to the Temple Mount. And then we know that from here, the stones uh, would be from the quarry would be taken to rebuild the Temple Mount. You see the stones taken from here to here, and also they would be used for other constructions. We, we know it. So this is, I think it's pretty clear. So I, I really like uh, how this infographic works. Uh, then also, we know that <clears throat> the quarry was uh, pretty big. And uh, at some point, well, they, they, they saw different locations. Uh, we know that there were several quarries. And then there was a, there was a site with a, with a, there was a bedrock. And uh, from the bedrock, you, well, you, that's it. So you, that's it. There, there was there was no way to go. And the, a certain section was left. It was left. And they found the proof that there was also other locations with the bedrock. This is exactly where the church is now. This is the quarry. There are a few locations here. And then they found the big, so the big bedrock. And now this is the bedrock underneath the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. So we know we are outside the city. We know here and there bedrock shows up. And then we know that the big bedrock is actually here. It shows, right? Okay. Do I know for sure? Am I convinced that the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is the site? No. How can I be? I, I know nothing. Uh, well, how can I be? I know no more than what we are all given. That's it. But See, if you're looking for, for the proof, here is the proof. Uh, if you're looking for something that would contradict it, well, you, you, you find something that contradicts it as well. Because, well, the Protestants, for example, they believe that uh, the, the crucifixion site is in a bit different location, for example. Uh, in East Jerusalem, there is a place uh, called the Garden Tomb. It doesn't matter. So now... It is what it is. So we are on the way to, to the Holy Sepulchre. So there's interesting archaeology there. And then the quarry was no longer needed. So it was filled up with, uh, with dirt, with stones or whatever. So you see that quarry is filled up. There is, uh, there is the temple, uh, temple Mount, right? And there's a lot of bad rock and that's it. So, and eventually there was just uh, nothing and then the garden. So it was just the area outside the city. And we know that exactly at times of, um, uh, well, of, of Herod, when the, the, when, when the second temple was already constructed, well, we know that there was, a, there was a garden and we know that there used to be a garden gate. We know it. So, and it's believed to be the garden area. And we know that the crucifixion took place outside the city. There was the caves. There was a garden. Uh, and, uh, well, it shows. It works. Well, at least from what we see. So now let's see actually what uh, what, what it looks like, what we've just seen in the, um, in the, in, in the graphics. So uh, this, is, uh, this is believed to be uh, the... Um, <clears throat> How should I say it? Uh, the the parts uh, of uh, the the wall, uh, and it's also uh, the, it's believed to be the garden wall uh, over here. So this is believed to be the garden wall. Uh, it means that here is already outside the city. This is the garden wall. Here they also found the gates. You you saw. So they are those are believed to be some part of the garden gates could be. So this is what they believe. So very accurately, right? Very, um, well, let's say, um, 
they're trying to be cautious, but they they believe that those are those could be the uh, the garden gates and the garden wall, and also. Uh, to the other side, uh, there will be different locations. So we know for sure that uh, at different periods of time uh, in that area, there were some shops, there were some residential buildings. And of course, later on, this area would be included. Of course, there will be other walls built. And of course, it will be, it will be included in the old city. Of course, with so many thousands, with so many centuries to come. And uh, this is what they keep finding at different levels. They keep finding the ruins of the houses uh, from the Byzantine time, the ruins of the market. We know for sure that there was a market at some point. And uh, so this is what the archaeology shows. They find different constructions that uh, date back to different times. And it's here, just underneath the 19th century church. And so, yes, on the one hand, you can say that Vio de la Rosa is a, um, a tradition. And I mentioned in the first tour uh, that not everybody agrees that the Vio de la Rosa is, uh, well, really repeats the journey of Jesus because not everybody is sure where the Jesus was actually kept to start with, from where he would uh, embark on his last journey. So from what we, uh, like the Vio de la Rosa, the way the, um, we did two more minutes and we are done. I know I'm over running and uh, two more minutes and we're done with the Q&A, 10 minutes and we're done. So uh, the, the Franciscans believe that, uh, the, uh, that Jesus was kept in Antonia Fortress. So this is the model of Jerusalem in the, in the Israel Museum in Jerusalem. So this is believed to be the Antonia Fortress. So, and they believe that, Je that Jesus was kept there. Uh, there's one more tradition that Jesus was kept in the Her in the Harris Palace from a different side of the uh, of the Temple Mount. But this is the tradition, and so this is this is what it's believed to be like that. This is one one version. Does this mean that Via de la Rosa is accepted by everyone? No. Of course not. It's mostly a Catholic uh, Christian side, as, uh, um, and uh, there are alternatives. We saw even on the Via de la Rosa, we saw other churches of other denominations that actually say, no, this, this happened here not there. There, are, there is an alternative to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the Garden Tomb uh, is believed to be a different location of, uh, uh, of crucifixion. Well, there are different views. It doesn't mean that Protestant pilgrims would want to be taken to, to Vio de la Rosa. They probably might want to see the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, of course, but uh, it doesn't mean they would tremble this as much as Catholics would. Of course not. So the other version is that uh, Jesus was kept in the Herod's palace. Um, we don't know. It's still, there's still kind of um, an issue. We, we don't know. What we know is that um, this is the temple. Here used to be the Antonio Fortress. So the Franciscans believes it was like that. This is the Via de la Rosa. But there is one more version that it could be like that from the Herod's place, and that it would be this way. Hard to say. Yet we have at least they both agree that this is outside the city. There is a there is Golgotha. There is a bedrock. There is elevation, and uh, well, that's that's sort of the idea. This would be it. I think so. Is there anything else I wanted to show? No, that's actually it. Good. I'm turning the chat on. Uh, questions are welcome. Uh, again, feel free to contact me if you need other recordings to see. I'm not an archaeologist. I'm not a historian. But, well, these are the facts that we've been given. So why not looking at them and who knows? Again, I'm not saying that I agree with uh, with the Via de la Rosa. I, I'm not saying it. I, not, of course not. I'm just saying you what it is. <clears throat> okay, so let me see. I know that for sure that I missed uh, the questions in the in the previous Q and A. Um, okay, let me see. Okay, the the Romanovs. I got it. Please uh, contact me, and I will send you the links. Okay. 
<laughs> Elman Halva is a favorite too, Laura Lynn. It's really nice, really, really nice. And But my absolute favorite is uh, uh, pistachio. I don't know. I'm in love with pistachio. I, I fell in love with pistachio once I moved to Israel. Before that, I was, I don't know. I knew nothing about how fantastic pistachio is. Okay, just not to forget, I will take a photo of this. Um, uh, Don, the previous tours, the recordings on YouTube are available for sponsors only. <laughs> so uh, my supporters have access to a secret playlist with more than hundreds of recordings there. But the but if you just want uh, one or two recordings, I send it uh, on demand. <coughs> Uh, Cindy, you have access to everything. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Uh, what is the difference among Golgotha, Calvary, and Gethsemane? Golgotha and Calvary is one of the same word. They mean skull. Golgotha is an Aramaic word. Uh, Gethsemane, this is... Um, this is a good question. This is, it is not related to, it's not the same word. Gethsemane is, well, there is a church believed to be the place there was a, a, a wine press, uh, gat means press, like wine press or olive press, um, and um, it is the <clears throat> it is the place where uh, it's uh, one of the locations. Uh, well, let's see where um, there is a church. It's called the Church of All Nations in Gethsemane. So it is believed uh, that from there Jesus was uh, captured. Uh, and uh, taken to uh, either Antonia Fortress or the um, Herod's Palace, and then from there, well, you know the story. <clears throat> Did you say there will be part four in two weeks? Yes, Mary. They, the, all the schedule is on my on my website. Here are all the links again. I just copy paste them. Uh, yes, and I am. I think it's quite likely that I will need two tours to to talk about Church of the Holy Sepulcher. I think so. I believe so. Uh, we'll see. I will definitely let you know. But the episode four is already scheduled, and it's it's waiting to be booked. What is halva? Oh, this is a very common uh, dessert in, uh, I would say, Arabic cuisine, Middle Eastern cuisine. It's the it's made of uh, <clears throat> shredded, like almost into a puree of, of nuts and sugar. Uh, and um, it's, um, it, it, they could be, it may could be made of different kinds of uh, nuts. And then it's uh, made into well, like a squares or rectangles, and then you just eat it like this. It's it melts in your mouth because it's because it's shredded like as a as a puree and then formed, and uh, it's really nice. It's very very sweet. If you're allergic to um, uh, to nuts, then I'm sorry, but there is also halva made from the sea, uh, um, sunflower seeds, so this could be an option as well has a very distinctive taste. Yes, have very distinctive taste. You either love it or hate it for sure. Very powdery, yeah, very powdery and oily. It's very rich, very rich. Uh, it is delicious, it is delicious. I, I kind of eat it every day. I would have probably got even, even fatter <laughs> had, I, <laughs> had I been eating it uh, every day. But it doesn't mean that I, uh, well, when, I, when I'm in Jerusalem, I yeah, have some, how about? Or knafe, um, or something else. Well, we will be we will have um, a pre pre recorded tour of the market in the uh, in the Muslim quarter. I will show you what all these desserts are. That's going to be after the um, Via Dolorosa. So we need to deserve a good dessert after all this uh, very serious stuff. <laughs> thank you so much, everyone. Uh, thank thank you so much, Florence. Thank you. Um, you have no idea what it means to me to, to give these tours. You have no idea how much time I spent, like how, how nervous I am also. Well, I've been only here for a year and a half and I'm only I'm only learning still, even though like we've still we've already covered a lot, but it means a lot to me. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for pre helping me prepare for my exams. Thank you. Um, thank you for supporting me. Thank you for your tips. Thank you for 
keeping me afloat all this time. Thank you. It means a lot to me. So I can't wait to see you in a couple of hours from now. I think it's 10 something p.m. my time um, <clears throat> on the Spielblatt Cathedral tour of St. Petersburg, also pre-recorded for us by my videographer. And it looks like he's already filmed another location for us uh, in St. Petersburg. There are a lot of tours in, the, in, uh, in progress, a lot of tours. Thank you so much, Jill. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Susie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One of my favorite sites, Church of the Spilled Blood. Oh, yeah. Spilled Blood is, um, yeah, it's a very special site for me as well. Thank you so much for joining. I don't want to keep you uh, any longer here. Thank you for spending your uh, time from the weekend with me. Thank you. And see you soon. Bye-bye.